हार हम लोग एक गर्ल भी थे बास्केट पूरा पार्ट पढ़ चुके आपको सलाह दिया था कि जो पिक यानी जितना हमने पढ़ाया उसको सुनिए देखो बेटा आपको दो चीजें आनी चाहिए बोलना और लिखना तो बोलना तो आएगा जितना ज्यादा से ज्यादा सुनोगे अभी हम कह रहे हैं रेडियो सुनो तो तुम्हारा अंग्रेजी में न्यूज वगैरह सुनो तो आपको जो है टाइम ही नहीं ठीक है तो आएगी ये कैसे भाई यह विषय है कैसे आएगा आने का आपको बोलना कैसे है उसके लिए हम आपको आप बता जा रहे हैं बेटा पूरा पाठ हम पढ़ के ध्यान सुनो और आप लोगों को सलाह दिया था कि रिवीजन कर लेना पूरा केवल सुनना है ठीक है ध्यान सुनो पूरा पाठ बोलने जा रहे हैं अब हिंदी नहीं बोलेंगे सीधे अंग्रेजी बोलेंगे ठीक है ध्यान सुनो बेटा द नेशन ए गर्ल विथ ए बास्केट हैज बीन रिटर्न बाय बिलियम सी डब्लस हु वॉज ए जज इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ अमेरिका इंडियन हिस्ट्री हैज बीन रिटर्न नॉट ओनली इन गोल्डन लेटर्स बट ऑल्सो इन ब्लैक लेटर्स इट वॉज द ब्लैक पीरियड ऑफ इंडियन हिस्ट्री हेन मुगलिया सल्तनत हिंदुस्तान वॉज डिवाइडेड इन बिटवीन इंडिया एंड पाकिस्तान आफ्टर पार्टीशन बिलियम सी डब्लस हु वॉज ए जज इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ अमेरिका came to india in 1950 <coughs> so that he might know the feelings of indians first of all the writer came to new delhi living at one place in new delhi he was not in position to know the feelings of indians it means he had to make a tour all over india the writer billiam c douglas left new delhi and started for the himalayas by train he had to go to bareilly Afterwards, by car he had to go to Rani Khet. In those days, Rani Khet was famous as an old British Army hill station, which was situated 6,000 feet above ground sea level. Before the hill station, there is 120 mile area which is covered with snow that is called the Himalayas. The train by which the writer was travelling was a passenger train because it used to stop. at each and every station lying on the way at every stoppage opening the door of his compartment the writer walked the platform so that he might know the feelings of indians on his way the writer saw that the platforms were covered with people six muslims hindus soldiers merchants priests porters beggars hawkers etc There were neither shoes nor sandals in their feet. They had put on kurta and dhoti of white color. Since the writer was an American, he did not know Hindi language, so he was in need of a man who could speak English. The writer asked three men in the compartment, but they did not know English. When he asked fourth one, so he had little knowledge of English. The writer began to talk with him about worldly activities. Afterwards, they discussed the headlines which were published in the newspaper on that day. In this way, talking with the man in the compartment, the writer William C. Douglas was trying his best to know the feelings of Indians, and he was checking the behavior of the officers towards the public. On his way, on his way, the writer saw. that it was one of the richest agricultural areas of india through which he was traveling because that was the plain of the upper ganga river which is situated 1000 feet above from sea level but it is a tropical area on his way the writer saw that the sand of the river ganga was a brown color by chance in those days there was flood in the river ganga and the flood water of the ganga was watering thousands of acres of rice when the writer william c douglas threw his eyes towards the north side of the railway so he came to know that there were a number of forests in those forests there was grass the height of grass was not less than that of man's head everywhere there was a routine of grass but the routine of grass was broken Where the clumps of trees were, as we know, 
long grass does not grow under trees. In those forests, dangerous animals like tigers, pythons, cobras, and elephants lived. Those forests were the houses of dangerous animals like tigers, pythons, cobras, and elephants. On his way, the writer saw that everywhere there was flat land. That flat land was running towards the sky. It seemed to the writer as though the flat land were trying its best to touch the top of the sky. But the running of the flat land towards the sky was checked by the sacred banyan tree as well as the Rosa Packard tree. Since the writer was an American, he did not know about the banyan tree and the Packard tree. So he compares those trees to that of his own country. According to the writer, the shape of those trees was like that of Al because their stems were strong and test. On his way, the writer saw that hot and humid wind was blowing from the southwest. Hot and humid wind was getting intense into the compartment of the train by which the writer was traveling. On his way, the writer saw monkeys. Among those monkeys, there were some mother monkeys. Those mother monkeys were clinging their babies with their chest. Clinging their babies with their chest, they were climbing up the trees and they were swinging up the branches of the trees at the plate pond as though they were hungry. On his way, the writer saw villages. In those villages, there were houses. In those houses, there were walls. The walls of those houses were made of mud, water and cow dung. The top portions of those houses, the roofs of those houses were made of rafters, bamboo poles and bundles of dry grass. By chance in those days, there was flood in the river Ganga. And by chance in those days, pumpkin vines were growing over the colorless walls of those houses. Having yellow flowers, pumpkin vines were growing over the colorless walls of those houses as though they were trying their best to decorate them. At one station, the talks of the writer with the people in the compartment was intermittent. As and when the writer came down at the platform, he was surrounded with a group of young children. Those children were selling baskets. Those baskets were made of reed in simple design and pattern by hand. Holding their baskets in their hand high, the children were shouting their words. Since the writer was an American, he did not know what the children were crying. But without any mistake, the writer knew the desire of the children. Indian history has been written not only in golden letters but also in black letters. It was the black period of Indian history when Mughalia Sultanate Hindustan was divided in between India and Pakistan. After partition, at the time of partition, hundreds of thousands of people were compelled to leave the path of their living. They were forced to change their residence. Ninety lakhs people left Pakistan and came to India because they all were afraid of religious excitement. Those children were the sons and daughters of those refugees. According to the writer William C. Douglas, those people who had come from Pakistan to India were already poor. As and when they started on their long journey from Pakistan to India, their poverty was increased because they could not bring what they had in Pakistan. They brought with them a bit of food and their few belongings. The result was that their food was finished very soon. After finishing the food, when they again started on their long journey from Pakistan to India, so they began to fall beside the footpath on account of the weakness of hunger. And wherever they fell, they took their last breath. According to the writer William C. Douglas, the children who were selling baskets at the stations were the sons and daughters of those refugees who had come from Pakistan to India. The children, their parents and their relatives had gathered in the streets of the cities. They had set small soaps. In those soaps they were making simple articles like fans and baskets. 
by selling those articles they were trying their best to earn their footing and clothing from those markets which were already overcrowded it means there was none in the market to purchase the articles manufactured by them the result was that their condition was very poor so they lived in the sets of cloth and grass that were lined in the streets of the cities among those refugees there were some peasants those peasants were habitual to live in their short living because the income of an agricultural family is not more than 100 dollar in a year those people who were untrained laborers earned 30 cents in a day that is not more than 2 dollars in a week the result was that their condition was very poor so they took their food once in a day in their food there was an onion a piece of bread a bowl of pulse with milk perhaps a bit of goat cheese there was neither tea nor coffee nor fat nor sweet nor meat in their food they were in this way they were leading the they were passing the days of their life in simple way according to the writer william c douglas the income of 100 dollar in a year is not more than 2 dollars in a week this is very easy to earn 2 dollars in a week but those refugees who had come from pakistan to india were not in position to earn 2 dollars in a week because we indians were so poor that we were not in position to purchase the articles manufactured by them to so seeing the writer putting on suit and boot at the platform the children gathered around the writer like to dust as a group of to dust destroys the greenery of a crop in the same way the children gathered around the writer to remove the greenery of his pocket in the eyes of the children the writer was the best market where in they wanted to sell their articles the writer who was surrounded with the refugee children at the platform was compelled to purchase a number of articles from them he bought a tiny basket a fruit basket a sewing basket a waste paper basket and few pens but he had not spent more than 50 cents to so buy spending less than 50 cents the writer william c douglas purchased a number of articles from those refugee children the arms of the writer were full of those articles which he had purchased from those refugee children at shouting their words the children were increasing the mob around the site the writer who was surrounded with the refugee children at the platform was like a prisoner who was not in position to march a step in the meantime an incident took place the writer william c douglas saw a beautiful refugee girl of 9 years old standing just before him among those refugee children she was the most hard working laborious and eager person she had a lovely basket with handle in her hand she wanted to sell her basket on that day at any cost because if she failed to sell her basket on that day to so see as well as her family members would die from starvation she wanted to sell her basket for 1 and 1/2 rupee or about 30 cents she was the earnest pleader is standing is standing just before the writer she was pleading begging and requesting him to purchase her basket in the meantime the writer read her face and came to know that there were drops of tears in her beautiful eyes to so seeing the drops of tears coming out from the beautiful eyes of the refugee girl the writer billion sidagas decided to help her at any cost because her begging tone was so sweet that it could melt any stony heart <clears throat> the arms of the writer were full of those articles which he had purchased from those refugee children there was neither room in the body of the writer nor any need for another basket it he had to help that refugee girl of 9 years old to so balancing all the articles in his left arm the writer kept his right hand into his right coat pocket and got a handful change of 15 cents which he deposited in the basket of the refugee girl who was standing just before him in a questing manner 
the writer told her that he was not in position to purchase her basket. So the amount of 15 cents was given to her as a gift. Having deposited the amount of 15 cents in the basket of the refugee girl standing just before him, the writer William C. Douglas came to know that he had done a mistake. Because that refugee girl of 9 years old was not ready to admit the gravity of the writer. In spite of putting on torn clothes and standing on the edge of starvation, that refugee girl of 9 years old refused the gravity of the writer. She raised her chin looked into the basket and like a grand Indian lady, she kept out the money from the basket and threw at the face of the writer. In a motorized, she warned the writer that she was not begging but selling her basket. This grand act of the refugee girl owned the heart of the writer William C. Douglas. But there was no way for him to help her because she was not ready to admit the gravity given by him. This grand act of the refugee girl forced the writer to purchase her basket. The writer bought her basket for 30 cents. After selling her basket to the writer for 30 cents, that refugee girl of 10 years old wiped the drops of tears coming out from her eyes. She showed her teeth, dashed down the platform and went where her hut was. The writer is telling his own experience that that hut had at least 30 cents that night. The writer William C. Douglas was very much impressed with that refugee girl of 9 years old. So he told this story to the contemporary Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. He told him that that was the reason under which he had fallen in love with her, India. And another Indian history has been written not only in golden letters but also in black letters. It was the black period of Indian history when Mughalia Sultanate Hindustan was divided in between India and Pakistan. After partition, William C. Douglas came to India in 1950 so that he might know the feelings of Indians. During his tour, William C. Douglas saw the people whether they lived in the villages or they worked in the high offices. He read their feelings and came to know that they all were proud of their citizenship. They had a lively sense for their decency and self-respectability. They all were ready to sacrifice their life on the altar of freedom. Among those refugees, among those Indians, there was a beautiful refugee girl of nine years old who impressed the heart of the writer William C. Douglas. Though she was born in bad locality and poverty, at that refugee girl of nine years old touched her the soft heart of the writer William C. Douglas. In spite of being uneducated in both grammar and manner, that refugee girl of nine years old owned the heart of the judge. And the writer William C. Douglas saw a living statue of Bharat Mata in that refugee girl of nine years old. पाठ का नाम है द ट्रू ब्यूटी थैंक यू ओके बेटा